Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. Matt Horn is not available. At the tone, please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. You have no authority here, Jackie Weaver. No authority at all. Hi, Matt. Jackie Weaver here. I was hoping to have a word with you about my new podcast, Jackie Weaver Has the Authority, but apparently you're not there yet. So pick this up as soon as you can. It's hard off the press, so do make sure you get back to me as soon as possible. Thanks, Matt. Bye. On the line, we have the wonderful Jackie Weaver. Hi, Matt. Hello, Jackie. How are you? I'm all right, thank you. So, to start us off, one of the things that this podcast relies on heavily is the use of technology. And it was amazing to see in 2020 and 2021 how much reliance there was on stuff like Zoom and Skype for people to be able to talk to each other. I know. I mean, certainly, you know, my experience, of course, being parish councils, and, and many of our councillors are of an older generation. We started off back at the beginning of 2020 saying, oh, virtual meet, not possible. We can't do it. It's too tricky, too too difficult, etc. And here we are in 21 saying, you can't take this away from us. We need it. Give it back. <laughs> now, for anyone who's outside of the UK... I should mention here that you are a sort of a viral legend of sorts. I mean, <laughs> at the start of the year, it was basically about the handful of parish council, amongst other things such as COVID-19. I've got a couple of clips here to show them, well, what happened. Hello again. Hello again. I thought I wasn't going to get in then. <laughs> when do we plan to start? I think we could start any moment, Chairman. Um, I think it's perhaps helpful just to go through the same things as we went through before, which is just to encourage people to switch off their microphones um, because it does reduce the background. Can we be assured that we won't be thrown out of the meeting like we were last time? Um, I, as long as we have reasonable behaviour from everyone, no one would be excluded from the meeting. I, w I, was, I was thrown out of the meeting. Uh, so was Quite Councillor right, Burtill, so was oh. Councillor Brotherton. Please let the chair. Mrs. Weaver, please. please. If you disrupt this meeting, I will have to remove you from it. You can't. It's only the chairman who can remove people from a meeting. You have no authority here, Jackie Weaver. No authority at all. She's just kicked him out. I, I, no, she's kicked him out. Don't, don't. She's kicked him out. Don't. This is a meeting called by two councillors. Illegally. You may now elect a chairman. No, they can't because the vice chair's here. I take charge. Uh, Read the standing orders. Read them and understand them. <gasps> Where's the chairman? Read the standing orders. It now reverts to me. Where's the chairman gone? The like to elect a chairman for this meeting. You don't have to elect a chairman. There's a chairman already installed. The chairman of the council. Councillor Burkle, we've been through this. You don't, what are you talking about? You don't know what you're talking about. Could I ask you to be, to be respectful to Jackie Weaver, Sorry. please? <laughs> Jackie Weaver, I find that uh, the person on Alec Brewerton's uh, Zoom is being very disrespectful to everybody. Oh, coming from you, from Birkenhead, that sounds good. <laughs> wow. Thank God for that. Can I propose John Smith, please? Yeah. I'll second it. Thank you. Okay. My, my, my first point is to apologise to Jackie, but welcome to Handforth. Indeed. Sorry. Nothing if not lively in Hanforth. Yes, but I, what I would say is that it, it was um, a very good example of bullying within Cheshire East and, and the environs. Um, the chairman simply declared himself um, clerk um, and notified everybody of the case. Um, and the um, 
remaining members um, quite correctly um, have you have refused to recognize that um, that position but as um, councillor smith says i'm afraid there's no way of stopping him calling himself clark okay. please refer to me as britney spears from now on <laughs> so there we go jackie what does it feel like hearing that again after i think it's what six months now um i guess in some ways it's old but in other ways it's kind of it's still shocking you know i'm often asked you know you seem very calm you come across this behavior all the time and my answer is hell no who'd want to stay in a job for 25 years where you were constantly faced with abuse like that so no I think that's one of the reasons why the um, the video, I don't know, captured people's attention. I, I think there was something literally shocking about the way that, you know, certainly one angry young man just totally lost it. <laughs> Is that the one that says, <laughs> well, there's a few actually, but the one that says, read the standing orders. <laughs> He's very passionate about his standing orders. Mm. Actually, I feel like I need to be a bit educational here. If you don't know what standing orders are how would you sort of help them out to explain them jackie I, I think the easiest way to explain standing orders is to say that they are the constitution of the council so obviously you have this viral video that goes big quite quickly it's about 24 hours and everyone was saying to me you know you have no authority here jackie weaver <laughs> and i'm going what do you mean <laughs> oh you've not seen it then you know that kind of conversation and then you've got the mugs the t-shirts, <laughs> the memes. I mean, you must have seen some of the memes. Well, I mean, the, the, there is something about ignorance being bliss. And I don't spend a lot of time on the internet. Although my husband might disagree, particularly when it comes to shopping. But you don't tend to see too many memes on the shopping channel. Most of it I didn't actually see. I, I've come across a couple that I thought were very funny. One was Britney Spears in a little kind of blue outfit, looked a bit like a an air hostess of old. Um, and then somebody else had mopped me up with um, Anton Dubeck in a in a very nice dance pose. In fact, I think I'd like that blown up for the bedroom wall. I mean, one of the things that you do say in the video, which I thought was bit sort of nostalgic for me of being a 90s kid was the fact that you referred to yourself as Britney Spears did that <laughs> did that just randomly pop into mind yeah I mean it, it most definitely shows where my, my music um, appreciation kind of tailed off but it, I was trying to make the point and I wanted to pick someone who I saw as being the opposite of me so young slim you know, pop star, that kind of thing, and making the point that, you know, I could call myself Britney Spears, but it doesn't make me Britney Spears. <laughs> and they had, one of them had referred, you know, said that they were now the clerk to the council. Um, and I was making the point that just because they say they're the clerk doesn't actually make them the clerk. You mentioned Anton de Beck. Would you ever consider a potential Strictly Come Dancing appearance? I, I like Anton, and he's been very <laughs> kind to me, and he's done a... He's also done a, a, a sketch on my um, podcast for me. So because I like him, I'd like him to win. And with the best will in the world, I am no dancer. And I kind of feel that part of Strictly has to be the ability to dance in some way. Do I mention Anne Widdicombe in this conversation? Yeah, I can do. No, <laughs> no you may not. <laughs> in fact, I'm going now. It's my Zoom call. <laughs> One of the things that might stagger people, because they naturally think that I'm just a journalist and all that malarkey, I grew up with local council around me, so I know exactly what you would have gone through and how arguments start and erupt and people disagree and all that stuff. And I think you said at the start, it is a, it is a constant thing isn't it there's no sort of oh my god this is a random scenario this happens all the time doesn't it not at that level it doesn't i, I mean I, I think that those of us that have been around for a while remember the um the first incarnation of the standards board for england 
and I remember one of their official rulings on something contained the um, phrase something like, one must expect some element of rough and tumble in debate in council meetings. And that kind of stuck with me. And I think it's true. I mean, you know, you, you get people arguing about things that are very local, very parochial and very important to them and tempers will get frayed. But that's different than the outburst you saw at the Hansforth Parish Council meeting. I sort of looked on YouTube and, and there's an hour and a half of the whole thing. You can watch the whole thing for an hour and a half and I thought, yeah, slightly worrying that they've managed to chop up six minutes of what is essentially a bigger... <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, well, yes, yes, but no, in mm. true politician speak. Actually, all that you see in the, the viral video does take place in the first five minutes of the meeting. Mm. So there were actually two meetings. There was a planning meeting and then there was a council meeting. And the same behaviour took place at the beginning of both meetings. And, you know, when you watch the rest of the meeting, to be honest, if you don't live in Hanforth, you will find it extremely dull because the councillors who remained went on to talk about the local transport plan, about new housing, about parking at the station in Handforth, all the kind of things that you would expect a local council to be engaged in. They were talking about a refresh of the neighbourhood plan as well, something like that. So after the disruptive element I was gone, I don't, I don't think I say another half a dozen words for the next hour. There's no mm. need. Mm. You know, my role is, is, is literally to facilitate the meeting and enable councillors to get on with their job, which they did. Mm. The first five minutes of both of the meetings, the first one was half an hour long, the second one ran for just over an hour, were very unpleasant. But then you have, you know, an hour of, um, you know, council meetings, which can be quite soporific if you're not actually mm. engaged in the discussion. And, you know, at the end of it, it's almost healed the pain of the first five minutes after the viral video people went back on the sort of the previous ones to try and gauge whether it had been like that continuously and i didn't get the hint that it was no <laughs> bit of a strange question for you when did you realize it had gone viral when was the point where you suddenly thought oh i, I think that would be waking up to television vans parked outside and reporters knocking politely on the door. <laughs> There's no ignoring that, really, is there? The night before, a colleague texted me and said, you're trending number three. And, and that's why I say ignorance is bliss. Mm. It meant absolutely nothing to me at all. Nor did it mean anything when they texted me a bit later and said, you're now trending number one. <laughs> so it was like, you know that thing where people go, <laughs> but you actually haven't got a clue what you're saying. Mm. It kind of felt like that. And I thought, well... It can't be anything bad, so let's not worry about it till tomorrow. And then in the morning, that was when we really noticed that something was different. And even then, my husband and I both kind of said, I'll just see where it goes. You know, it'll all be back to normal by Monday. Keep calm and carry on. On Monday, we'll, um, we'll see us all back to normality. And, um, well, it, it hasn't been this Monday yet. Mm. Jackie, this is a dangerous question for you, OK? Would you class yourself as a celebrity? No. No? I've heard, I've read stuff online today which says that you're a national hero. <laughs> <laughs> well, in, in, in which case, I suspect that heroics are probably not as hard as I thought they were then. Um, <laughs> no, I, I don't think that at all. I do think what I have done is take the opportunity that's been afforded me to promote the things that I do feel strongly about and it feels like it feels like a a two-way conversation you know I've been trying for a long time not not just me but you know the, the me's that exist around the country and the National Association of Local Councils I've been trying to to get some traction from the media to to report more about local councils and to to get local people involved in them to understand what they are and what they can do in your, your local community and that's been tough so i've kind of used this as a you know a, as i say a conversation so you let me talk a little about local councils and along the way we can have a laugh about something you know what, whatever you want to to bring up mm. and that for the moment seems to be working quite well 
has afforded me many more opportunities to, to you know just keep saying local councils than, than we've ever had before. Which brings us quite nicely onto your podcast, mm. mm-hmm. which is aptly named, I thought, <laughs> Jackie Weaver Has the Authority. <laughs> As you say, if it's your podcast, you have the authority. Yeah. Was it like a no-brainer when you were thinking of the title? Were you thinking, nah, obvious? <laughs> I would like to say that, but actually I wasn't the one that came up with the title. Mm. <laughs> I. I mean, I've heard it's a bit like an Agony Aunt kind of podcast. You get special guests and the public can ask you questions about things. Uh, you've had Jeremy Vine on it, I believe. Yep. Who else is coming up? Can you tell us at all? Oh, gosh, yes. Uh, lots. Um, Anton de Beck, Tom Allen, Reverend Kate Botley. She, she was great fun. Oh, all sorts. Uh... Jack, Jack Whitehall, has said that um, he'll do a return favour. I did the Brits, he'll do my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I should mention here at this point, because obviously the Americans and Canadians won't necessarily know about this, we have an award ceremony, don't we, Jackie? And you did what was essentially a spoof of Line of Duty. Yep. <laughs> where you pretended to be H. <laughs> Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> Is that a show that you'd like to guest appear on as a counsellor? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I could ever learn the acronyms that they use. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's the thing. Line of Duty hasn't dealt with local councils yet, have they? It's more sort of specifically police oriented. Yeah, and, and like bad people. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Shooty people and, um, yeah, lots of death. No, I, I really see myself, I think, in some thought-provoking, apocalyptic movie. I, I think that's where I'm going. <laughs> like 28 days later, but a bit slower. Yeah. Or if Brad Pitt wants to do the second version, I don't know what you call it, the second, the sequel to World War Z, give him my number. World War Weaver, there you go. <laughs> Yeah, I have a feeling that Jonathan Ross could play a part in that somewhere. Mm. Mm. <laughs> now, I, I do have to ask this question, because it has been sort of been doing the rounds on Twitter, because you've mentioned films now. Could they do a biopic of you? They'd need a really good writer. Mm. I mean, it, it's like, you know, here's a basic story about paint drying. Make it exciting. Um, you know, I mean, my life, it's not that exciting. Well, I mean, to me, it's exciting. It's the only one I've had. But, you know, something for people to watch. I think we would have to take great liberties with the truth. It's real. It's not, you know, something you could really easily script, is it? I think it would be very difficult mm. to, to script in a way that made it exciting or, or really interesting for people to watch. Because, like I said earlier... The, the point of parish councils is that they are of real interest to people of the parish. Mm, mm. But anybody watching from the outside, it's, you know, dull. If you're local, it means the world to you. I was just about to say, I quite enjoyed it. What does it say about me? <laughs> you need to get out more. <laughs> Dangerous question. Who would play you? Oh, Helen Mirren. Yeah. Yeah. Who would you suggest? I mean, Dame Judi Dench. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that'd be fine. Glenn Close. She's she's all right, but she's American, so it's a bit more trickier. Well, we could, we could try and teach her the accent, couldn't we? <laughs> I don't want to rule her out on the basis no. of her accent. No. That, that wouldn't be fair. I mean, Jack's obviously going to be... Read the standing orders. <laughs> <laughs> he did that surprisingly well. Mm. Frighteningly well, I thought. So going back to your podcast, yep. obviously you've opened it up to the public. What are some of the questions you get asked? I said in my last tweet, you know, really we, we are answering the questions you didn't know you really needed to have answers to. <laughs> uh, what can I think of? 
Mm, how much do you have to pay for a bottle of good champagne? About six quid, I would have thought. Okay, you need to stay in more. <laughs> um, <laughs> what is the best dance to outrun the zombie apocalypse? Thriller, I would have thought. A song or dance? Dance. Oh, dance. Oh. What was the answer? What, what did you come up with? Oh, I could not possibly let you know that. You'd have to listen to the podcast. <laughs> so these important mm. kinds of questions, yeah? You know, do you put the, the jam or the cream on first on scones? And in fact, are they scones or scones? I mean, that's an age-old conversation. Yes, but these things need answering. <laughs> We cannot leave these questions unanswered forever. What came first, the chicken or the egg? If you want to submit it, <laughs> I think we could consider it. Well, I was going to share with you my sort of question, which okay. I definitely want to submit to you now, Jackie Weaver, for your podcast. Right. You ready? I don't mind doing it in terms of voicing it if you want me to. Right. Now... I know, of course, that there's such a thing as Ofcom, so I know other headphones are available, okay? Okay. It's this. So I bought some iFogs earphones the other day, and I got them off eBay, and they got sent to my house. Why on earth (laughs) do they put it in this plastic packaging that you have to, you know, use scissors for? I I don't know, Mm. but... When you find out the answer, let me know, because as someone who feels passionately about keeping nice nails, I ask exactly the same question. It gets worse because, I mean, this is just an example that, that I've got to hand, but you can see where I'm going with, with the idea. Okay. Why on earth do they put scissors in the same material for you to then go and get another pair of scissors to get the new pair of scissors out? <laughs> Very important question. Very important question. Can I submit I, it? <laughs> I, have, I have one for you. Okay. Why is it that when you specifically put into the search engine that you want headphones that are wired, mm. that you keep getting wireless headphones? That's a good question. I know it is. <laughs> I mean, it's almost like you sometimes have to read the final, you know, small print to find out Damn it, they are in fact wireless again. There are so many of these questions, they trouble us. And I, I felt it was my civic duty to begin to try to answer some of those questions. Why is it they remake good movies? Because all the good plots have gone. I mean, I'm a great fan of Tom Cruise. Are you? Uh, m- yeah, Mission Impossible. Well, that's not Tom Cruise per se, mm. but, you know, Mission Impossible, I think I like him particularly. Why did we need to remake The Mummy? Because it's not The Mummy. It's a remake of The Mummy. I mean, it's like, why? Mm. Why not just make a different film with a story about an Egyptian mummy? You know, And then I wouldn't go into the cinema expecting to see The Mummy, but with a bit more action. You're enjoying this podcast, aren't you? <laughs> What's not to enjoy? <laughs> I don't get out much. Oh, come on, Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't, <laughs> honestly. We well, haven't in the last 12 months. Here's the thing. Here's the one thing I wanted to sort of address in, in terms of local council as well. Obviously, Hamforth were in lockdown periodically across the year. Leicester was in it for the full 12 months. Right. Why? Perhaps they were very vulnerable. Mm, judging by the age demographic of Hamforth, I'm not... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sort of, you know, agreeing to that. How was COVID-19 for you anyway, Jackie, in terms of the, the pandemic? Work-wise, people who know me will know that I've spoken in the past about I just don't get the idea of working from home. I've been really outspoken at work about how it just doesn't work. And being thrown into it at the beginning of the pandemic, I thought, yeah, now I know why it doesn't work. This, this is just not for me at all. Um, I kind of felt really lost, kind of powerless, cast adrift, any of those kind of um, phrases you might want to use. And then I began to see opportunities. So as an organisation, we've been talking about doing online training for a long time, literally two or three years. And being the person who would be responsible for 
delivering it in some way, I kept thinking, we'll have a look at that next year. And next year wasn't coming round very fast. So I started to get to grips with it. And within three months had built a, a reasonably accessible training program um, that we could deliver virtually. And it was really well received. And as soon as I, I kind of felt that sense of, I think I belong here, I, I found a place for me to fit in, it started to look better. Um, and as I say, we went on with the programme of uh, training, we went on from strength to strength. Then we started to develop other little initiatives, like on our website, we've got, we've never done it before, but we commissioned three little videos, um, got them professionally done, showing parish councils working with the voluntary sector in their local communities to deliver for, for local people again you know something we'd never done before so then we we're beginning to see the the pandemic in 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 terms of how we could live with it you know as i say i, I felt at the beginning of it that actually we would become irrelevant you know the parish councils would all kind of become very inward looking and you know as a support organization what use would they have for us but the opposite was true. Parish councils themselves became much more active. They became much more involved in local service delivery, in supporting local people, and then in turn needed us to help them with the logistics of the things that they were doing. So actually, it was a really busy year. And at the end of it, I think we feel that, you know, several things. One, the parishes have learned a lot and they've grown Chalk as an organisation has grown and actually as a team, we're only a small team, there's just three of us, we have found a way of, of making working from home work for us as well. So it started off in a really bad place, just, just depressed I would say, although Harry is making depression very fashionable these days. Um, and then by the end of it, having found a purpose and you know, a way forward. Mm. Now I'm going to ask an intelligent but dangerous question. Do you think that the local councils were funded enough to cope with the pandemic? There's, there's two, three different levels of local council depending mm. on where you live. Everywhere we have town and parish councils. Mm. And then in some areas we then have a unitary authority that, that kind of, you know, is geographically over their councils. So in Cheshire, for example, we have two unitary councils, one in the east and one in the west of the, um, the Shire County. And between the two, we have something in the region of, blimey, I've forgotten, uh, 312 parish councils. So in other counties, in other areas, they have three tiers. They have town and parish, they have borough, and they have county council, and each increases in geographical size. Now, when you talk about government funding, you're only ever talking about county council or unitary or borough councils, mm. because town and parish councils get no central government funding at all. Mm -hmm. Any money that town and parish councils have is direct taxation from the people who live in that parish. Mm. So the answer is no. <laughs> I don't know the answer is no. I mean, certainly the district and county councils will have... I mean, I can't argue that mm, case mm. because I don't know. I mean, certainly there didn't seem to be a lot of discussion about lack of funds locally. Mm. And we seem to be able to do a, a great deal and mobilise very quickly. Although part of that was also enhancing the voluntary sector and also the town and parish council movement. So I think that what we see at local level is an ability to make best use of the money that there is available. If we're talking a sort of parish council level, the amount of, I suppose, community support in the area during that time is far bigger than the monetary aspect, surely. Historically, parish councils haven't worked particularly well with the voluntary sector. Mm. Be, I don't mean there's this tension there. I just mean that they, they simply play in different ponds. Mm. But what we saw with coronavirus is actually they were working together mm. um, because parish councils have resources, they have staff, and staff weren't um, you know involved in doing committee meetings and things like that because that was on hold. So the staff in turn were, were kind of being 
like the marshals for, for pulling together community activities and things like that. I feel we really saw a change in, in those two sectors coming together locally, mm. um, which was really, it was good to see because, I say, so historically, it hasn't been something that you've really seen. And of course, that brings us quite nicely to the petitions that you're you're doing at the minute. Yeah, I mean, nobody can have watched that video and come to the conclusion that the behaviour should not have had some form of sanction. Uh, I mean, mm. sometimes when we're talking about behaviour, you know, you, there has to be an investigation, blah, blah, blah. But in this instance, I mean, really, the evidence was there right in front of you. But unfortunately, no matter what behaviour that you see from a councillor, unless it moves into criminal behaviour, there are no sanctions. Mm. The monitoring officer can investigate it. The monitoring officer is um, someone from the borough council, usually the borough solicitor. So they can investigate it, they can appoint an external investigator to investigate and report. But at the end of the day, even when it's found that there has been a serious breach of the code of conduct, bullying or harassment or something like that, the monitoring officer can recommend training. They can't even insist that the person undergoes training. And so what the petition is doing, um, mm. the petition is just being lodged with government now. We just had some feedback on the wording, which they'd like us to change a little. But the petition is to introduce meaningful sanctions into the code of conduct so that when you see behavior like you saw on the video i'm not, not saying only that kind of behavior but behavior that falls below the expected standards of someone in public life then there is the ability to stop them either holding office permanently or suspending them for a period of however many months mm. or requiring them to undertake training before they can attend another meeting mm. you know because i don't believe that if you're really serious about improving standards you can say that and then say but we're not going to introduce any sanctions otherwise but if i recall wasn't there a sanction after the meeting because there was investiga there was an investigation in... there was an investigation and the investigation literally was concluded two weeks ago mm. The report runs to 156 pages, but it wasn't about the meeting. It was for behaviour before the meeting. Wow. So, you know, as you might imagine, mm. it didn't start that night. But prior to this, it had nothing to do with me at all. That was my, my first um, venture into um, Handforth in that respect. There was another complaint about that night, but that um, I don't think has been concluded yet. But as I say, prior to that, there was a damning report, I think it's available on the uh, Hanforth website, 156 pages. All that work, all mm. that effort, all that money, because, you know, you have to have a, you know, for something as detailed as that had been, there was an external firm of solicitors employed to do the investigation. And, you know, there would still be no sanction at the end of it. However, Alan Dipad has resigned. Right. <laughs> Councillor Burkill, the one who um, starts the meeting, yes, but he's um, back mm. to the, um, the camera. He has resigned, mm. and the chairman has stepped down as chairman, but has retained his seat. Right. I'm a member of the public, Jackie, and you've just told me there's a 156-page document that's been processed, looked at, all that stuff. With a team of lawyers, so that would have cost money. Oh, gosh, yeah. Is it a bit of a waste if there's no no sanction at the end of it? You're exactly the kind of man I need to have signed my petition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely mm. right. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It is a nonsense. There are no sanctions. Now, I guess that one of the reasons why is because whoever was drafting the original legislation assumed that there was kind of... You know, if somebody had behaved very badly, for example, the party whip would be withdrawn. And that is a kind of sanction if, if you're a, a creature of the party. But our parishes are apolitical, so it's irrelevant. And there was another there was another petition you're you're doing as well, apart from the sanctioning one. Yeah. Don't like to let too much grass grow under our feet. <laughs> 
it isn't actually a petition, but the government currently has a call for evidence on their website into the retention of the ability to hold virtual meetings. Unfortunately, the way the legislation was drafted, councils in Ireland and Wales are in fact able to continue holding virtual meetings. But the way the English version was drafted, it was only made available to councils for 12 months. So on the 7th of May, we lost the ability to hold virtual meetings. And what we're saying is that that is ridiculous. You know, in a modern world, you know, we should be able to hold virtual meetings. And we have lots of evidence. That's OK, because the government's called for it now. Mm. Um, showing that actually they, they, they are hugely important when it comes to inclusivity you know if we're trying to encourage more people to get involved then you know taking away something like this at this time is just crazy it's a real backward step well i'm now going to do something new for matt oh. Hornet. yes i know you're my guinea pig <laughs> so <laughs> oh, sweet at the start of the year we lost larry king and on his show, he had a segment called If You Only Knew. So, in honour of Larry King, it's back. And I've renamed it. It's now called If You Only Realised. <laughs> so, it is basically a quick fire between you and me. Okay. Well, I'm asking the questions. Right, obviously. go yeah. for it. Yeah. Favourite chocolate bar? Cadbury's Dairy Milk. Why? It's, it's nice. <laughs> okay, fair enough. That was a stupid question. <laughs> <laughs> Last film you saw in lockdown? Uh, oh, I think it was before lockdown. Um, latest Keanu Reeves film. Oh, I can't think of the name of it. John Wick. Uh, John Wick 4. It's not even out. Yeah, or it might be three. <laughs> it might be three. Oh, it must be three then. <laughs> You don't seem like a John Wick fan. Oh, I like, I like Keanu Reeves. What middle-aged woman doesn't? <laughs> OK, fair enough. Why you got into local government? To right an injustice. Any particular injustice? <laughs> yep, yeah, we had elderly farmers who voted against providing a children's play area in the village. Advice you would give to anyone wanting to get into local government? Um, sign the petition to make sure that we can retain virtual meetings, watch a couple and decide whether or not it's for you. Zoom or Skype? Zoom. What's your beef of Skype? <laughs> <laughs> In my particular circumstances, whether it's my IT setup or whatever, I seem to drop out of Skype more often than Zoom. Been a fairly good connection so far. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Goggle box or the chase? Gogglebox. Taking part in, which one would you have done? Gogglebox. You want to do Gogglebox? I thought Gogglebox I'd, I'd like to do Gogglebox, mm. yeah. The last TV soap you watched? Coronation Street in the 60s. <laughs> I think I think Sir Patrick Stewart was in 70s or 60s, something like that. Was he? Yeah. Oh, I must have missed that, but I, I would have been very young then, thinking about it. Yeah, Patrick Stewart, great fan. Favourite sport? None. None? None. You don't like watching sport? No. Really? Yes. I've got three boys and one husband, um, which I think is a much better than having three husbands and one boy. And none of us watch any sport at all. Your favourite political person who's been an inspiration to you? I haven't got one. No? Not someone historical? No. <laughs> I was going to say your favourite battle next. <laughs> <laughs> Easy. That would be the one that I had in hand for <laughs> <laughs> in the middle of December. <laughs> Your favourite comedian? <laughs> Obvious oh, one. I I do like I like Tom Allen. Mm. I really do like Tom Allen, and I also like people like um, oh come on, not very long ago she was in Dinner Ladies. Victoria Wood. Victoria Wood. Oh. Blimey, she was funny. Hmm. So, yeah. If you had the choice of three people to dinner, you can choose from people who are alive, people who are deceased, 
who would you choose and why? For me, that's like kind of rubbing your tummy and patting your head at the same time. I'm happy to talk over coffee and a cake, or it'd be nice to go and eat a nice meal, but <clears throat> doing both together, just leave me alone. I just want to eat this. <laughs> okay, if you could have a if you could have a coffee meeting with three people living all day, who would you choose? Oh golly, because I don't I don't do history. It kind of narrows down the choice a lot, so it usually ends up being kind of like people that aren't real, like Mr. Spock from Star Trek. No Nemo, yeah. Who else? Oh, I know who I like. Oh, oh come on, what's his name? Michael Fassbender. Okay, yeah. Mm. Yeah, he's he's lovely. Mm, women, um, the Queen. I'd really like to just chat through what's going on with Harry at the moment. Okay then, dangerous question. <laughs> Prince William or Prince Harry? William. William, really? Yeah. Why? Nobody should throw their family under the bus. Simple as that. Can I just say that's probably going to get mean now? <laughs> <laughs> it will, it will get mean. You knew that's the one I would choose. I think the Queen and I could sort it out. Oh, your favourite holiday? Um, we're not big on holidays. We only do two holidays. One, we take the dogs to Kenmore in Perthshire. And two, we go to Tenerife. To the same resort. Do you think anyone in Tenerife would know who Jaffy Reaper is? <laughs> It'd be great, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll find out next year, won't we? Have you had people from outside the UK know who you are? Yeah, <laughs> oddly. Not so much recently. Uh, not that this started all that long ago. Mm. Uh, New Zealand, States, Australia. I had interviews with all of them. Ireland, but that doesn't count because that's the UK. Scotland, quite big in Scotland. They like me there. Six words, right? Guest host, yeah. Have I got news for you? When? Would you do it? <laughs> I'm clearing space in my diary as we speak Because let's be honest here It's either Have I Got News For You Which Boris was on Or Becoming Prime Minister that, That's a no-brainer I do <laughs> not want to be Prime Minister Think of all the compromises You have to make as Prime Minister When I said to people I'm interviewing Jackie Weaver The first thing they said to me was Oh, she's the Queen <laughs> I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> you have an odd collection of people you mix with, don't I you? I do. Yeah, I, I, I really strangely do. Yeah, it is quite amusing. <laughs> what you wanted to be when you grew older? Doctor. Did you ever get anywhere near it? or? <laughs> uh, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I realised it was going to involve far too much work. <laughs> And blood. <laughs> I, I just thought we could just wing it, you know, and see how it went, and you know, learn on the job. But apparently not. Favorite possession that you have? Um, ooh, a figurine, I think you'd call it, a little statue kind of thing called uh, the Book Fairies by Jenny Oliver. Jamie Oliver. <laughs> Jenny. Oh, Jenny. I was going to say. <laughs> Jenny Oliver. Beautiful, beautiful um, little um, tableau kind of thing. So you you into your art, into your sculpture? Not so much. Sometimes something just sings to your heart. And this was one of those things. Favourite radio station? Four. See, I thought about your podcast and I thought that would be a really good thing to have on something like Radio 4. Well, mm. you must just get in touch. Yeah person that you really desperately 100% want in your podcast that you don't already have? Boris. No? Harry. Harry? You want Harry? Yes. Really? Yeah. You said that you like William more. What I want to do is, is better understand the family dynamic so we can put them right. So, you know, have a bit of a chat to the Queen, mm. have Harry on the podcast, I think we're, I think we're on to something there. Because you're sort of turning into the, what would be the word, the mature version of Jeremy Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. 
because I mean that podcast is for everybody. It's not like a specific set, you know, group that you're speaking to. It's everybody. Yeah. So that was the only person I could think of off the top of my head <laughs> that caters to everybody. Having Harry would, would would actually be a service to the royal family, and you know, but we'll just get this sorted. And that is the end of the first. If only you realised with Jackie Weaver. Mm. Well, I'm going to give you a one minute plug. Hooray! One minute plug to plug Jackie Weaver has the authority and anything else you've got coming up, obviously you can do the petitions again. Oh gosh, at the moment um, the things that I'm involved in are um, I'm delighted to be asked to be an ambassador for Compassion in Politics. Again, a bit of a theme there. I think being nice to each other is vastly underrated. Podcast, yeah, do sign up for that. We could all do with a bit of light relief, and hopefully that's what that brings you. And when you have your batteries recharged and you're ready to take a foray back into local government, then do make sure that you get involved in the petition and also the, I can't think what the government call it, call for evidence. Mm so that we can make sure we have those meetings virtually and when we're having those meetings physically or virtually they are better behaved as a sort of final note when i was at university i was part of the students union in a very small way it wasn't sort of anything elected anything like that so i do have this sort of history wanting to get into politics but i'm just too much of a renegade <laughs> Maybe you just haven't found the right council. Oh, OK. <laughs> because local politics is about aff- affecting change. Mm. It, it isn't about just carrying on doing exactly what you've done for the last 20 or 30 years. Mm. So, you know, it, it's, it's kind of, you know, like I said earlier, it's about recognising that the council itself is just a tool. You know, it's, it's a mechanism for you to achieve what you're trying to achieve in that local community. So, well, bring on the renegades. <laughs> and then 20 years later, they'll play this again when I'm Prime Minister and Jackie's, <laughs> <laughs> Jackie's my... You're my deputy. <laughs> no, I, I want to be your Dominic Cummings. <laughs> the one in the background. <laughs> the one who sort of takes trips to... <laughs> this is getting dangerous. Barnard Castle... For an eye test, or... And then allegedly stabs you in the back some way down the line. (laughs) (laughs) Dominic Cummings, obviously, we know about him. What are your thoughts on Matt Hancock? Uh, Has he done something recently? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I mean, Mm. mean, during, during the pandemic, I think we could count on him on a regular basis to look troubled, to, you know, tell us all to look after the NHS wipe your hands and things like that and and you know we are where we are and most of us are still alive for which we are probably very grateful but he does have a a very the scots have a word for it a very doer expression you know you, you could imagine him at a birthday party putting a damper on things <laughs> but maybe he's the right man for a crisis jackie weaver says matt hancock would dampen a children's Front page of the mail tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> do you think do you think we're coming out of lockdown too early? I don't know because I'm not privy to the information that the government has, but I do think that the messages are a little mixed. We are being advised that we have a new variant coming in that's quite aggressive. And then I read in the mail. We have a hundred thousand people booked on holidays to Spain this month. I'm not quite sure how those two things go together, but mm. I'm not the one with the information, so maybe it's okay. So you're a mail reader. Yes, I like their letters page. Have you written in? <laughs> <laughs> I like reading it, not writing oh, it. Okay. <laughs> they might give you your own column. Well, if Bell Mooney. Once a week off, they should just get in touch. Well, Jackie, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Obviously, we'll have to get you back in some form of capacity. I don't know where. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I might need bribing, but okay. (laughs) That's fine. If you want me to be on your show, that's fine. (laughs) 
I'll speak to our agent. <laughs> <laughs> You've got an agent? Oh, I don't. No, I haven't, I haven't actually got an agent. I might be more or less busy, I'm not sure which. Mm. Well, here, here's the more busy, obviously. Well, it'll be interesting to see if you all remember me at Christmas or when I'm next seen in Tenerife. See, I'm sure there's a there's a toys department out there now doing Jackie Weaver plushes. That you press it and it goes, you have no voice, you know. <laughs> I, I'd prefer to think they were doing a version of Barbie, a kind of shorter, wider version. <laughs> That's the question for the for for the public, isn't it? Would you want to? Plus, plus Jackie Weaver, or a um, or or a Barbie. It's it's a question. You see, that's the kind of question you need to write in with. <laughs> do I tweet? Do I tweet it? By the way, if I want to. Yes, you know where to find me on Twitter. Yeah, I do. Or um, you could do it directly to um, at Jackie Weaver Pod. Yeah, wonderful. I'm just gonna just gonna do that. Do that. Do that now. I shall I shall look out for it. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful stuff wonderful stuff well Jackie it's been a pleasure interviewing you and you were good fun bye bye now